There is a new Web3 bug bounty platform that is rewriting the rules for Web3 security researchers. There are so many opportunities and so much money to be made in this platform, especially because it's new. There are a lot of new bounties and also the competition is way less than other platforms. Another super cool thing about this platform is that they have some new dope tech regarding ZK proof for duplicate submissions. So it essentially minimizes the trust between you, the security researcher, and the protocol. But wait, 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 wait. This is a lot of information already. So in today's video, we're gonna explore this new Web3 bug bounty platform and show you how you can take advantage of it. We'll do a complete walkthrough to see all the features, how it works, how it's different than other Web3 bug bounty platforms, and how you can get started and make some money by submitting bugs. So without further ado, let's get started. So the name of the platform is Remedy. Maybe you are familiar with the domain r.xyz. And here you can see, this is the programs page. So you can see all the opportunities and all the bug bounties that are available right now in this platform for you to go explore, check the scope, try to find issues and vulnerability in the code base, submit them through the platform and make up to 30K, up to 100K, up to $1 million, half million dollars. A lot of bounties are already listed and obviously the competition is way lower because not that many people are familiar with this platform uh, because it's just new, you know, this is how it works. Competition usually moves from one to another platform and there are a lot of nice opportunities here for bug bounties and as we speak, they add more and more and more uh, bug bounty uh, programs and it's worth mentioning that actually every bug bounty a program goes through due diligence. Uh, Remedy is built by Hexense, and Hexense is a company with vast experience in Web3 security and auditing and security reviews. So they essentially review every single a program before they launch it and before they add it to the platform. So to minimize the risk for the security researcher of not being paid, it happens many, many times where uh, researchers submit bugs in other platforms and the bug is just being rejected or ignored or sometimes even the protocol just runs away from the from the platform and just disappears, just not taking accountability for the vulnerability that was submitted, just fix it, but doesn't pay the money for the Web3 security researcher. So it's worth mentioning that in order to reduce the risk for the security researchers, every program here goes through due diligence by Hexense, by the researchers, by the team. And now let's talk about some things that are very different than other Web3 bug bounty platforms. First, in this platform, all the triage is going to happen by Hexense experienced security researchers. So every time you submit a bug, whether if it's pancake swap or, or one inch, for instance, then the triage process is going to be with researchers from Hexense, experienced researchers that's going to analyze your submission. Also, the team of the protocol, like one inch, might uh, get into the picture and help in the process. Uh, but it's very important to understand, and this is something that is not very common in all the Web3 bug bounty platforms that you might be familiar with. Another cool thing is the ZK duplicate proof, which is mind-blowing, guys. This is a huge, huge, huge technology and huge feature that essentially reduces the risk for a security researchers of not being paid by the platform or by the protocol when they submitted a legitimate submission, legitimate issue, legitimate vulnerability, which happens many, many, many times. So if you're a Web3 security researcher, you probably submitted some issues through bug bounty platforms and sometimes you got a reply that your bug is, your submission is a duplicate of other submission that was submitted beforehand. But how can you make sure? How do you trust the protocol or the platform in the middle that it's actually the truth? How do you know? You don't have to trust. In Remedy, you can actually verify that someone actually submitted this issue before you did. How does it work? They have an entire ZK proof, duplicate proof system. So essentially when you submit a bug and then you it gets rejected because it's duplicate, 
Then you get all the information, including a ZK mathematical proof on chain evidence with a transaction on the blockchain on the Polygon ZK EVM blockchain that proves that someone else submitted exactly the same issue before you. And it's not just some someone made up that it's a duplicate. You have a proof, a mathematical proof. You don't need to trust, you verify. But before we dive into this super cool tech, I want to walk you through the platform and show you how you submit a bug, how it works, how you can get started and start exploring protocols and submit bugs. And I just chose here one inch smart contracts. For ex for example, for this particular program, you need to submit a KYC. There are other programs that do not require KYC. You can filter them. You can search through the programs page. Uh, the UX is pretty nice and pretty straightforward. I also heard that they're going to even improve it more. So Pancake Stripe, essentially, we, you don't need KYC, but if you want to submit an issue to one inch, you need to uh, submit a KYC. And here you can see everything around this program, right? So all the information when it's launched, how many participants submitted issues, right? How many issues uh, you submitted or not. Um, here you have general information about the program, what contracts are in scope, what are the terms of the program, how much you might get paid if you get the right vulnerability and it's legit and it's confirmed. So all the information uh, around this program is essentially here in the first, uh, pay first section of the page, including the docs, the code, everything. Then you have all the severity. If you submit a critical, you can get up to half million dollars. But if you submit a high severity vulnerability, you get up to 23 thousand dollars so essentially the higher the severity the more you can get paid for your issue which takes me to another subject how do you determine whether it's critical high medium low informational so they came up with this cool rvss calculator that allows you to check what is the severity of your finding of the issue that you found. So you can check here different information regarding your issue and then you get a score. And based on this score, you can understand what is the severity of the bug and the issue that you found. So it's very mathematical, not much room for arguments. It's very clear and it's actually inspired by a traditional cyber security severity calculator. And this exact system is based on CVSS, which is the most common uh, severity scoring, vulnerability scoring system in traditional Web2 cybersecurity. They just created a Web3 version out of it based on this system and this rule set. So we can head over to the resources, RVSS calculator in general, just as a tool to assess severity of issues that you find in code, in smart contracts, which is another great side tool. It's essentially for here, but in general, you can use it also in your audits and you can use it as well for submitting bugs here in the bug bounty program. If you scroll down a bit further, you can see all the program rules, some guidelines, and the most important part is in scope. You want to make sure that you are laser focused on the smart contracts that are in scope, because if you find vulnerabilities in other smart contracts or other code bases that are not in scope of the program, you might not get paid. Now, if it's sometimes depends on the protocol, sometimes they do pay, but you you, you cannot be guaranteed that you will be paid if it will be a legit submission, legit issue. So always make sure to take a look at the scope. Now, let's assume that you found an issue, you found a bug. So you click here, this button, submit a bug. And this is the form to submit a new bug. Pretty straightforward, pretty clear. You set a title, demo, bug, Johnny time, number three, because I already submitted two bugs for one inch as demo for this video. I will show you later how the ZK proof system works by these previous bugs that I submitted. Here you can select the assets that are in scope in which GitHub repository uh, or smart contracts your a bug was found, the severity, maybe it's low, medium, high, let's say low. And here you describe all the issue, you know, all the, the sections, bug description, impact, risk breakdown. If you're in Web3 security, this is something that is not new for you, something very uh, straightforward that comes from every other platform, whether it's auditing competition or bug bounty platform. And then here you can add links to the repository, line numbers, attachments, whatsoever. So I'm gonna, just gonna change the description, ignore this submission. This is just a demo for Johnny Time video, okay? So this is our submission over here. I'm not gonna attach any code or, or files. I'm just gonna submit a report over here. And the cool thing is that Currently, right now, there is a ZK proof being generated for your report in the background and submitted on 
chain. So there is a proof that you, the security researcher, submitted this vulnerability at a certain point of time and it's being added to the Polygon ZK EVM blockchain and going to be stored there forever. Isn't it cool? And that's why, by the way, it might take a while and you can see that it was completed. Here we can view the report, right? We can also cancel the report. It's a demo report, so I'm probably going to cancel it later. I'm going to click here, view report, and you can see all the details of your submitted report. You get an ID, which is cool, but what's even more cool is that you have a ZK proof. So you can click here, view details, and then you have this cool new sidebar that was open for you. We have here two things. First, we have proof of record and then original reports hash. What does it mean? Let's try to see. So here I can click the link and it opens the Polygon ZK EVM Blockchain Explorer. By the way, fun fact, Hexense were the company that audited the Polygon ZK EVM. We can click here to show more. We can see the transaction is pretty fresh. I didn't pay any money for it because currently they are sponsoring it. They have realtors. They submit the transactions for you uh, through their backend. So you don't have to pay any money for submitting new issues. And here we have something interesting. So we can see that we just sent from this EOA account to 000 to null this data on chain. Now, what the hell is this data? Let's see. Let's convert it to UTF-8. And here we have some kind of hash. Now, if you go back here to Remedy, you can see that this is exactly the hash, the report, the hash of the report. And this essentially is a hash, a value, unique value that represents your report on the blockchain. So anytime someone can come to the blockchain, take a look at this transaction and see that your report was submitted at this exact time step. So if there is a duplicate, we can check it later and make sure that it's a unique submission and not a duplicate. Now keep it in mind because now I'm going to show you how the duplicate system, the ZK proof duplicate system works. So the whole thing about this ZK duplicate proof system means that they don't want you to trust the protocol, but actually to verify the protocol and the platform, the intermediary, that your report is actually duplicate. So in such unfortunate case where you submit an issue and it's actually someone submitted it before you, it's a duplicate, you can prove mathematically that your report was submitted before and not just trust on the on the platform and trust the protocol. Now, how does it work? So as I mentioned before, the triage is going to happen by Hexen security researchers. Now, let's say that one of the researchers saw that your report is a duplicate of a previous submitted report. He can mark it as duplicate, but not only mark it as duplicate. You, the researcher, can request for a proof that it's a duplicate. At that point, the researcher will take a look at the original report that was submitted because we have a record on the blockchain, a proof. Then he will censor a lot of parts of this report in the backend and only leave maybe one line or two lines that, that essentially proves you, the researcher who submitted a duplicate report, that this is actually a duplicate and it was submitted before hand. He cannot show you the whole report in order to not expose the protocol for risk, right? Because it might be a sensitive vulnerability that wasn't patched yet, but he can show you maybe one or two lines to show you and prove to you that this report was submitted before this issue was submitted already. And then you can get the proof from the triage process, from the researcher. You get his proof, it's a two JSON files and also some text, uncensored text, and you can use a tool, specific ZK CLI tool, to make sure that this proof is legit and it's actually a duplicate of a transaction and submission that happened before in the past. Let's see how it works, okay? So here we have two demo submissions. We have demo submission joining time one and demo submission joining time two. These are two submissions with high severity that submitted on the same day on July 1st to the one inch smart contracts bug bounty program. So let's open number one over here. 
So number one is the first report for that was submitted. Let's say that is the first one and it's eligible for a bounty. So it's just a dummy report, right? Just an example. But let's assume that this is a legit report that is high severity and should get a reward. Here you can click the details and see the transaction in the Polygon EVM, the hash of the original report. And now let's assume there is another guy that submits exactly the same report. In that case, it's going to be me because I'm only one guy. But I submitted the same report twice, okay? So this is report number two. And report one, number two, as you can see here, it's closed already. And here you can see that this second report was uh, marked as duplicate, but I requested here a proof that it's duplicate because I don't want to just trust the platform that it's duplicate. So here I got a ZK proof that the second report is a duplicate of the first report. One, the submission two. So let's click here, click here and view ZK proof. And we can see that we have proof of record and original report hash. We also have public.json and proof.json. So you can take these two JSON files and validate that they are, they are legit. You can click here how it works. Uh, if you want di to dive deeper of how these ZK proofs uh, works, they have an amazing docs documentation. So you can just go to the docs and read more about how it works how the tech works and how you can, as a Web3 security researcher, run this ZK proof CLI tool, right? It's snark.js. You need to clone a repository, do some setups, and then you can download these kind of JSON files and validate the, that it's actually duplicate to see the original report that was submitted, not the whole original report, but just a, a small part of it and the transaction that was submitted to the blockchain. And if we compare here this ZK proof of duplicate to the first submission, we can see that it's exactly the proof of record is the same hash, transaction hash, 0x49. And here as well, 0x49. Also, the uh, hash of the report is 0FC, and this is also 0FC, which essentially means that the report number two that I submitted is a duplicate of report number one. Now you can also click here this I icon and see the original report. You see that everything is uh, censored apart from a small part. It's a demo for the Johnny Time video. So the, the triager can censor all the sensitive parts and just reveal some parts that prove to you that it's actually a duplicate. And this is how you can see it and you can validate and verify it by downloading these two JSON files and launching this ZK Proof CLI tool according to the documentation and make sure that it was actually submitted beforehand. So this is huge for the Web3 security industry. I love to see this kind of new tech and how products and platforms are being better and being more advanced and improving all the time. And you should definitely go ahead, open your account, check it out, use the link in the description below to get access to this amazing, amazing platform. Try your luck there. Try to explore different programs to submit some legit issues and maybe get paid because the price spot is insane. One million dollar, half million dollar, one million dollar Boba Network, and they're going to add more and more and more programs. The competition is lower. You can, you don't need to trust the platform. You can actually verify if something goes wrong. So you should definitely check it out. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome web3 security educational content thank you so much and i will see you in the next video bye bye